be going over different type of spray tips and guards, um, how to read the numbers on your spray tips, what's the difference between all these different guards, kind of just going over all this stuff. So let's jump right into it, um, starting with the guards. So I'm going to move all the tips out of the shot. Now let's talk about spray guards. Um, there's essentially four different types of spray guards uh, when we're talking about Graco and Titan. Graco has three variations of the spray guard. Titan only has one. So they make it nice and easy for us. So the first thing I'm going to talk about the spray guards is the thread on the gun. Um, luckily, when it comes to all the major brands of paint spray equipment, they've all decided to stick to a certain standard. And this thread, Graco calls it a 7 8 I've heard some people refer to it as a 22 millimeter. Not sure how accurate that is. Um, but the number one way I hear it referred to as is it's a universal G-thread. So we call that a universal G-thread. So what does that mean? Well, that means I could take this Titan spray guard and it's going to thread right onto my Graco gun. No issue. Because the thread on both guns is in fact the universal G-thread. And I could take any of these Graco guards and I could thread it onto a Titan gun. So one good piece of information to take from this right now is technically you can use different brand guards on different brands guns, especially if it's Greco or Titan, the two major brands. But not all tips fit on all guards. So let's go into it a little deeper. Let's get my guns out of the way. We got our guards we got some spray tips here right and here's some Titan spray tips so what goes with what and why so first I'm going to start with the black Titan spray guard um, this one is the Titan brand one it's always black and um, these black Titan tips actually fit any of the Titan tips whether it's your red Titan tips your purple fine finish Titan tips, the green HEA, a high efficiency airless Titan tips will also fit in this guard. And the white line striping Titan tips will also all fit in this guard. So Titan made it nice and easy where all of their tips are gonna fit this one single guard, which is black. So that's easy. So let's get into the Graco stuff where it gets a little more complicated. And I'm actually going to start with the green one, or I'm sorry, the orange one. The reason I'm starting with orange, uh, this is the oldest Graco standard. Um, the only time you're going to see these orange tips coming on a new unit today, in you know, 2019, 2020, is if it's a Magnum unit, uh, which is kind of like a homeowner light duty unit, or if you're buying a line striper because they still have these rack five guards on the line striper and um, that's what these orange ones are referred to they're the rack five guard so what fits in the rack five guard well the black rack five graco tip fits in the orange guard kind of like halloween black and orange they go together the only other graco tip that's going to still fit in the old style Besides the black ones, which is the most popular combination, will be the line striper tips. The yellow line striper tips are also rack five. And you can actually see it there on the packaging, rack five. That's how I know it goes with this guard, which is also called the rack five guard. So I could use either of these two styles, Graco tip with my rack five guard. Little bonus though, piece of information that a lot of people don't know is I can also use Titan tips with the old Rack 5 guard. Um, so I could take my Titan tip and I could drop it right in there and you see that my orifice lines up perfectly to spray. So these uh, Titan tips actually do fit inside of the Graco guards. 
Uh, a lot of people don't know that. So if you do have the old style orange guard, which is the Rack 5, uh, you're most likely using these black tips. But if you do have some Titan tips laying around, they're technically also compatible. And that's the old Rack 5 style. You won't see it as much on any of the new contractor quality machines. So let's talk about the new style. So the new Graco style is referred to as a Rack 10 or Rack X. And it's going to fit um, a couple different types of tips when it comes to Graco. It's going to fit your green, fine finish, low pressure tips. As you can see, it says Rack X on the packaging. Also Rack 10, which lets us know it fits the Rack 10 guard. And then the always popular blue tips are also Rack X or Rack 10 tips. So they go together with this. So when you're using your blue Graco guard, you can either use your great green FFLP or LP tips or your regular LTX switch tips, which are blue. So all in all, the green guard, the blue guard will take green or blue tips. And that's called Rack X. You cannot put Titan tips into this guard. They will not go in no matter how I turn it or twist it. That spray nozzle will never line up correctly, completely incompatible, will not work, don't try it. So that's that one. Uh, the least used one, but one I wanna touch on because I do wanna give everyone all the information uh, humanly possible today, is this gray Graco tip. Um, it's the heavy duty tip, they call it the XHD. Um, you only use it with the gray XHD rack switch tips because it's the XHD guard. This is really for thicker material, block fillers, elastomerics, um, thick coatings. You would use this combination. Um, not really extremely well known or out there because it kind of has a special use. A lot of painters don't really use this. Um, but obviously in different industries, this is all they use. So I wanted to touch on that. So we've got all the tips out of the way. We've gotten the guards out of the way. So now let's talk about how to read these tips, right? Because... I got different tips here and they have little numbers on them. If you look at these, they both say 517. And you know, what, is, what does that really mean for us? How do I read this? What does this mean? And what does this all turn into when I'm actually spraying my job? So when I look at these tips, I like to take these three numbers and I immediately take the number and I split it. I separate the first number, which is five, and I you know mentally separate the second two numbers, which are 17. So we're gonna take it one step at a time. First is the five. So whenever I see the first number on a tip, which on this one it's five, I immediately double that number and that's how I know how wide my spray pattern will be. The width of this spray pattern is determined by that first number. So since it's five, I'll double the first number. This is gonna create a 10 inch width spray pattern if I hold it one foot from my spray surface. So a 517, will create a 10 inch spray pattern. If I had a 317, it would create a six inch spray pattern. If I had a 217, it would create a four inch spray pattern. So you always take the first number and double it and that's how wide your spray pattern will be. And that leaves us with the last two numbers. Those last two numbers are pretty much the size of the orifice. What those last two numbers stand for is the size of the orifice to a thousandth of an inch. So this says 17 as the last two numbers. That lets me know that the size of this orifice right here is 17 thousandths of an inch. And um, really, what does that mean? Why do I care about thousandths of an inch, right? Well, because a couple things. This is actually that orifice size is going to control your material flow. Uh, if you want to slow down your material, you're getting some running. You might go down to a 15, maybe a 13, maybe further. Who knows? If you're getting a lot of clogging where you're noticing you have to switch your tip back and forth a lot, it's clogging a lot. Well, maybe you need a larger orifice size. Maybe go to a 19, to a 21, to a 23. That's why it's important. But there is more. Let's just imagine we have a situation where I have a... 517 and a 317 okay so now I have two tips 
one is going to create a, a 10 inch fan pattern because it's a 517 and I also have a 317 which is going to create a 6 inch fan pattern and this is where these combinations are really going to come to play. Both of those tips, because they both end in 17, whether it's a 317 or a 517, they're both going to put out the same amount of material per minute, but they're going to differ in the size of the spray pattern. So what does this mean when the paint is actually on the wall? Well, what that means is I'm spreading the same amount of material with a 517 across 10 inches. Then with the 317, I'm using the same amount of material, but I'm only spreading it across six inches. So when I'm using the same orifice size, but a smaller fan width size, I'm actually putting a thicker coating down because I'm using the same amount of material, but I'm not spreading it out as thick. So that's a pretty important concept that a lot of people miss out on. I'm gonna go over it again. A 517 and a 317 tip are both gonna put out the same amount of material per minute. But the 517 will spread that material across 10 inches, where the 317 will only spread that material across six inches. So the 317 will be putting down a thicker coat than the seven, than the 517, because it's not being spread so wide as it hits the wall. Important concept. And really, the kit and caboodle of all these spray tips, that's gonna pretty much explain it all. Um, we went over the guards today. We went over the spray tips and kind of their differences. If you guys have any questions about any of these concepts, feel free to leave me a message. The last piece of information I'll touch with is kind of like the generic, what size tip, what tip should I use for my material? If you're using a lacquer or stain, you should be using a 09 to a 13 tip. So you would use a 509 to a 513 spray tip for lacquers or stains. For oil-based paint, you'll use anywhere from a 13 to 15. For latex paint, you'll use a 15 to 19. For heavy latex or smooth elastomerics, you'll use a 21 to 25. For the elastomeric or block filler, you'll be using these guys and you'll be using a 25 to a 35 size orifice. And those are just kind of starting off points. It's not the gospel, you know, um, it's a lot of trial and error when it comes to this stuff um, because everyone sprays at a different speed. Everyone moves their hands at a different speed. So there is variation. There's no one perfect answer for you guys. But once you get this knowledge of how it works, why it works and what these numbers mean for us and how it's going to act on the wall, it really all comes together and you're able to create that really good spray pattern that you're looking for without getting those heavy outside lines or maybe running too much material because um, you have running paint down the wall because you have too much material spraying out. Um, thanks for listening. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave us a comment on our Facebook, our Instagram, or our YouTube. And have a great day out there, guys.